defense. This team is not going to be a great defense. There is that. This team is going to be more in, in the archetype, I think, of w what Detroit did last year. But is that – And that could be very good for Stafford and Cup and Jefferson and, waiting to and Cam Akers. Yes, I, I agree with that. Cam, I, Cam Akers? Uh, Cameron. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I got I, you. I got see, you. now I was lost. Yeah. I think you can be both. I think you can be a bad team. <laughs> Cam and Cameron. No. That's, that's, what, that's all I thought. That's all I thought he was saying. I thought he was just saying, you could, you could be why both. Do I, why do I do this job? There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to fantasy football losers. A dimension where championships flow freely and celebrations are commonplace. It is the middle ground between light and shadow science and superstition, analytics and film. The easiest road to this place is the ultimate draft kit. Imagine stealing a breakout player while your opponent falls for another siren of catastrophe. Your preparation from over 100 player profile videos will be the difference between the pit of man's fears and the summit of knowledge. This is the dimension of Foot Clan titles. Commit this website to memory and dominate your draft. UltimateDraftKit.com Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Thursday, July 27th. Andy, Mike, and Jason back with you. Tick-tock on the clock. We got yeah. football on the way. Training camps are happening. Yep, and if we can base any... We've adjusted all of our rankings based on yeah. the first play mm -hmm. for each team. Who touched it first? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> That's what we Which said. Which running back received the first carry? Yeah, other way with to say first it. team <laughs> hot start, hot start, hot start, Jay. Oh, uh, you were doing the headbang as the show started, which has become kind of a signature move for you. I just look the music moves me. Yeah, and uh, we've got the final divisional breakdown. You can see I'm wearing this beautiful hat. Wait, uh, this is it? It's the final divisional breakdown show. The, wow. The, the NFC West today. Okay. Uh, these hats are for sale. The By the team. The team the is Cardinals? selling them on a discount. No, the <laughs> NFC they're West. Not, they're just handing them out. Um, Please wear this. We'll get to talk about them today. We've already beat them up all off season, so let's. I'm know. not done. Uh, so NFC West breakdown today. Quite a bit of news we need to talk about as well. Jason and I, on the last show, we were just saying we came out of the the lull where there wasn't a lot of NFL news and we just get on here and just say, well, Delvin Cook hasn't signed and DeAndre Hopkins hasn't signed. And now we actually have things happening, contracts, uh, information, news, all sorts of stuff. Here at the top, a couple of reminders, ultimatedraftkit.com if you need a draft guide to help you through draft day, which is coming up very soon. And you can import your scoring settings. Uh, we have all of our player projections and uh, profile videos and lots of information in there at ultimatedraftkit.com if you want to learn more about that. And then the Dynasty Podcast. Oh, baby. What's going on there, Mike? That's, uh, uh, that's I didn't do this week. yesterday morning. What's going on there, Jason? Uh, we, we had a, do you remember? Oh, yeah. We had a great <laughs> show talking about uh, running backs after the top 10, like the rest of the running backs, whose value we see going up, going down, veterans to target. Um, it, a lot of great discussion. All right. The community, in case you're interested in getting on the discord and, uh, joining a league, bunch of premium perks, a bonus weekly show that's join the foot.com. And we're not too far away where the, uh, the mega bowl will be on the way as mm -hmm. well. Um, so our big tournament coming up soon. We'll tell you more about that, uh, in a bit. News and notes from around the league. All right, Justin Herbert, five-year, 
$262.5 million contract extension through 2029. Congratulations. The first shoe to drop. Joe Burrow will be getting a check very soon. And I believe once both of them have signed, that puts like Patrick Mahomes at like an annual value of like ninth in the league. Yeah, he had he had just the strangest deal though of like his his guaranteed money was much lower than these guys, but it I think that it was only like eleven percent of yeah, the four hundred fifty million. I also I think Mahomes is like he's but he's signed forever. Like like he will be at Kansas City Chiefs and, until he's no longer on the earth. That's essentially what it'll be. Well, and and they will give him a raise. I mean, they will they will do things to uh, further compensate Patrick Mahomes. But it isn't interesting precedent to have a long term deal, and then be able to just layer in raises and and re. Yeah, I, I'd rather be if I have my franchise quarterback. I'd rather be like renegotiating stuff than just having to freshly negotiate stuff. But um, Justin Herbert gets the bag. Saquon Barkley, we just missed this news on the last episode mm -hmm. of the show. We were talking about him and Josh Jacobs. He agreed to a one-year deal with the Giants. It is worth up to $11 million. Yeah, and and the, so he got – so the way that I saw the contract broken down is essentially he gets uh, a little bit more money. He does get a signing bonus yes. uh, as well, so he gets some of that money up front, and then there are – there's incentives built into it should he put up the yardage that – we would expect a healthy Saquon Barkley and the to catches, put up. And the catches. Yeah, and the receptions. Just like, and then he'll, he'll make a little bit more money. So he he did not get what he had hoped for or he wanted, but he is going to – he should make more money than he was going to make on the franchise tag. And it also uh, – it's also people – it changes now. Um, it, like, this, the whole formula, should he be franchised next year? Because this – this isn't done. Like this is part of what the NFL can do is so this is a one year so he's not on the franchise tag anymore. Right. He's on a he's on a one year deal. And should the Giants choose to be just big big B holes, <laughs> they could franchise tag him. Um yeah, I mean they could. Just, just I, I'm not it's hard for me to to condemn them as as you know B holes for using the system in no, place to manage their team. I get that, but like, I'm saying the whole situation of was they can't agree on a long term deal, and so essentially Barks, Barkley's like, "Fine, I'll do one year with you guys, then let me go to sure, market, sure. and then." But, but the Giants can be like, "Well, what about one more year?" Um, right now we still have angry running backs. J.K. Yeah. Dobbins not practicing. Uh, John Harbaugh's latest comment said, "I wish there was a simple answer." That's a J.K. question when asked about the status of J.K. Dobbins. Also, Harbaugh, it, just, it sounds like you're saying that's a just kidding question. We can't be doing this. Uh, that's a Dobbins question. It is. And we, I mean, right now it seems like it's a money thing. Josh Jacobs left Las Vegas. We reported that he is not going to be with them for a while. Um, I had, I had tried to do some digging on what the situation was there in Las Vegas with Jacobs, where the mindset was. Went back a lot of we probably reported it on this show. I don't know if you remember this, but like Josh Jacobs came out in February and said he'd be happy to play on the franchise tag. And what he said though is he conditioned it upon the team. I think in his mind is probably investing in pieces around him. He said, I'm happy to play as long as we invest money on making this team better. Obviously he got to the point where he either felt like he wasn't being compensated fairly or they didn't invest properly. And it became a, a bit of a fallout situation. I talked to some people around Las Vegas that, you know, cover this team full time. And I got a percentage breakdown of what they think is going to happen. 85% chance, according to who I talked to, that he would be back and playing in week one. 10% chance, and this is what I thought was more interesting, was that he would be traded. And so there was a higher chance that he'd be traded. And then and then it would be 5% 5 5 chance that a holdout goes into the season. So... Just putting the trade thing on the table there is very interesting. He had come out. He wants to be a Raider, but he wants to be paid. Sure. And, and so it, it'll be interesting to see what happens with, with that, hopefully. You know, there were people out there with Jacobs and Barkley as their, like, two dynasty running backs. Mm -hmm. At least one of your problems have sort of been solved. I don't know if it changes your outlook with Saquon and Dynasty, though. Uh, no, I mean, I, I expected Saquon 
to play this season. It's just nice to have the confirmation now. And I still expect Josh Jacobs to play this season as a Raider, but we won't have that confirmation as quickly with him. Uh, unless it's like last episode when sure. we said that, and then all of a sudden there'll be news that we didn't cover. Um, so, yeah, J.K. Dobbins, I mean, that's not great. Well, he's Because this team is going to be moving forward with other running backs and plans, and then hopefully, you know, Harbaugh said no timeline to return. He's on the pup. Yeah, he's currently hurt in the in the wallet. He's got an a, a his torn. Wallet, yeah, his wallet is injured. Torn yeah. leather. It's not full enough. Cole Komet signed a four year, fifty million dollar extension with <laughs> thirty two million dollars guaranteed. What? Cole Komet scored seven touchdowns in the final ten weeks last year. His third season. Hey, this is when tight ends tend to, uh, you know, ascend and become household names. I mean, I, I, I think it, it is. It's a shocking amount of money for what Cole Komet has done uh, for his NFL career. But I, you know, the Bears. I think the Bears have the money. Cole Komet is still young, and it's it, it. It could be a little bit of a bet here. Of they, they feel like Komet is about to emerge as one of their go-to players. And Do you think they looked at his total receptions from last season and said you get one million per reception in this deal? Possible because <laughs> he had fifty last year. And he got fifty million. So <laughs> that's how I we went know. into the negotiation. I don't know. I don't know if you are aware of this, Mister <laughs> Manager. I caught fifty passes, and I like million. I would like fifty million. More pup news. Players starting camp on pup. There's some concerning names in here. Jonathan Taylor, head coach Shane Steichen said we want to make sure he's 100 percent healthy, and when he is, he'll be back out there. Okay. It's I not, don't love it. Yeah, it's not I great. don't love it because the the timeline when we left last season certainly felt like he wouldn't be missing any of training camp. And, you know, they want to make sure he's 100% healthy. That means that he is not 100% healthy. And we've still got a little bit of time, but you don't you don't love to see that. These ones, less surprising. Kyler Murray, Zach Ertz, uh, both on the PUP. Talking about the Cardinals on today's show. We'll talk about them. Wandale Robinson and Sterling Shepard, both recovering from ACL starting on the PUP. You know, Jason mentioned it. It's um, it's almost bigger news for a, a player coming off an injury to not be put on it, like yes. Javante, than it is a player coming off of injury spending some temporary time there. Yeah, right? certainly. And the, and like, a, like Kendry Miller's already off. Oh, was he? Yeah. Oh, I, I missed so he, that. I mean, he went on it, and then he like said hi to everybody, and then they're like, get out of here. And – this is a reminder because transactions are being made in the NFL, so these guys are actually on the on the PUP list. That means make sure you're going and looking in your dynasty rosters because you can now move those players to the IR spot oh. should you have uh, players that, you like, like me, I've been sitting here on sleeper. My roster was a little bit over. I couldn't make any moves. Now I have multiple people I can move on to my IR and uh, move some things around. Uh, quick mention here, Jamison Williams suffered a leg injury, something going on with his leg, according to Dan Campbell. Already has a six-game suspension. So this um, is not great. he said, I don't think it's significant, but Hopefully. he's not going to practice. But uh, he'll have to be recovering from injury during that suspension. Here's another big piece of news. Kyle Pitts mm. did participate in the first training camp practice, was wearing a brace on the knee. Arthur Smith says he expects Pitts to be ready for the season opener. However, you know, Matthew Betts, our injury expert, who also hosts the Dynasty show, he pointed out to us, you know, this surgery was November 29th to repair an MCL. Um, it's not typical for players to wear a brace eight months out from an isolated MCL repair. So it suggests that there might have been more damage to the knee than we knew about or we're talking about, and it yeah. might take time for him to ramp up. Jason, what was your reaction to that news? Uh, it was negative. I've been <laughs> pro Kyle Pitts uh, this offseason. He's someone that, you know, near the 6-7 turn, I've been grabbing a lot of Kyle Pitts. I would really like him to be healthy because he's got quite a roster percentage for me. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is he, purely selfish. He's a uh, late fifth-round pick right now, but Goddard, Waller, Ingram – Friermuth all back behind him right now in drafts. Something to keep in mind. Monitor is a lot of time before the season. Kadarius Tony surgery to clean up cartilage in his knee. Good um, grief, man. Third knee scope in two years. I went through the injury list the other day. It's not been good for Kadarius Tony. 
in our best ball breakdown today, we'll talk about some players that have risen in ADP and best ball. And uh, to no one's surprise, non Kadarius Tony Chiefs wide receivers are on that list. And incredibly, this is, I mean, do we have the applause button? Believable. Let me read this. The Saints have signed Jimmy Graham to a one year deal. Jimmy Grandpa is out of retirement. Jimmy, Jimmy Great Grandpa. Jimmy Great Grandpa <laughs> skipped last year, said, I'm not done with football. I kid you not. They posted the picture of him signing the contract with the Saints, and I was 100% sure it was signing to retire yeah, a Saint. It was, it was the, the 10 day deal yeah, or whatever. Like, like Frank Gore did with the 49ers uh-huh. to, to retire a 49er. No, it was to play tight end for the. Taysom Hill, Juwan Johnson, Foster Moreau, uh, Foster Moreau, and now Jimmy Grandpa in the end zone. It's unbelievable. When 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 I had thirty six point seven years. Young. When I saw the alert, it wasn't even a question. Of course, this was just signing to retire. Uh, and then a, it's like a you, fantastic career, a great career that was way long ago. Don't do don't do this, Jimmy. Oh, he's back. He's back, <laughs> baby. You're just mad because last time we saw him, he was costing you uh, yeah, what was hundreds the, of dollars. Who, was it Disney versus <laughs> yes. Jimmy Graham? Yep. Yeah. You want to do it again? Yeah. Is Disney oh. still around? I think he's still around. I'll, he's a, I'll still take it. He's as around as Jimmy Graham. Yeah. yeah the yeah. watch is on, baby. <laughs> All right. Any other news, Brooks? Uh, any chance Josh Jacobs has, has signed anything? Or? Nothing yet. Okay. Here we go. Let's get divisional. Well, with the NFC West breakdown being our final divisional breakdown show, as we look at these offseason changes and offenses and how uh, you know rookies and coaching staffs are going to make a difference in 2023, I realize the very last team we'll talk about is our own Arizona Cardinals. Let's just hope that's that, the way the season ends and we got that number one pick. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, let's hope we never have to speak just, of them again. We just trail off after the Rams. <laughs> All right, uh, let's start with the 49ers. Last year, projected win total of 10. They ended up 13-4. and four. This year, they're at 10.5. It opened at 11.5. It's been uh, bet down. Interesting. So uh, if you can't really talk about the 49ers without talking about, you know, great fantasy football options and – the kind of slew of injuries that they seem to suffer and deal with every single year. Last year, Elijah Mitchell was barely present. He was, you know, a player highly drafted, sought after. Trey Lance went on IR in week two. Jimmy G went on IR in week 13. Kittle, weeks one and two. Uh, Debo missed a bunch of time as well. Here we are. 2023, big win total. Favorites in the division, certainly. But um, this is going to be Brock Purdy's team with some Trey Lance on the side. It is worth noting Brock Purdy did not go on the PUP to that's, start training. I think camp. that's pretty big news. Yeah, yeah. And uh, last year they were sixth in points per game. Uh, they ran the football a ton. And they made the midseason trade for Christian McCaffrey, which was monumental for them. So, um, you know, their their offense – I think we all have a great deal of trust in their offense. And uh, Warren, Sharp, Warren Sharp put this out there. I think it's really interesting when you look at the weapons that they have. But their quarterbacks, um, how they rank in yards after the catch per attempt since 2017, the way the offense is designed. Garoppolo was number one four straight years. C.J. Beathard was number one. Garoppolo, I mean, they've been top five. Every single season, no matter who's out there, they get the ball into playmakers' hands, which they've got McCaffrey in the passing mm-hmm. game, Kittle in the passing game, Debo. Who's better than Debo? And then Brandon I.E. can do it too. And so uh, that's part of their game plan is putting their quarterback. That's why the quarterbacks all succeed there in, in, in large part because they're not always asked to do stuff down the field. Or when they are, they pick their spots and they've softened a defense up. But um, they also have one of the best defenses in, fo- in football. And so that always comes into focus here when we look at, you know, whether Brock Purdy himself would be a relevant fantasy asset for players. You know, normally a team that's going to win 10, 11, 12 games, 
that has weapons in the passing game like Kittle and Debo and McCaffrey, normally you'd be like, well, I want that quarterback. Is that the case with Brock Purdy? I, I don't think it really is. You you can get by, you know, if the, if you're in a, a super flex league and you want to have Brock Purdy as your quarterback too, um, that's great. But, you you know, you go back and you look at how he performed last year and he was he was very, very good. There's a reason that he has overcome the number three pick from this team and uh, he's been handed the keys to the kingdom because he won a lot of games and played very well. But even still, you look at the fantasy output when he was successful throwing touchdowns and you're you're talking 21 points. That's that's OK. 16 points, 16 points, 17 points, 19 points. It, it, he wasn't he wasn't doing anything special for fantasy football uh, as a quarterback, too. Sure, but I don't think you're targeting him. I think he's a, at least currently, it, it could change now that we know that he didn't start on the pup, but he's a undervalued quarterback too. I agree, he's he's not a he's not a top twelve guy for me, but him finishing in that you know thirteen to sixteen range, I don't think it would be surprising at all. That would put him and, in competition with like players more heralded like Jared Goff. Would you put possible, Goff ahead but, of Bert, Purdy? Obviously, um, I th I think I would, but my point is being you like know a streamer he's he's being drafted extremely low right now like he it's it's almost like he's he's still being drafted as if you're not the, the confidence of of the crowd is not there it's yet the health right yeah yeah and, uh, and i uh, i totally get that but it's like that's that's totally worth the shot for me it was caused by the health mike is correct that he he is undervalued ADP wise. If you're in a, a you know a, a dynasty startup or if you're in a, an underdog draft where you're going very very deep, and and I don't think the ADP will ever catch up to where he should be simply because it started with the injury where nobody was drafting him, so he was really really late. And now when you're really really late, it's hard to climb up when you're not a special fantasy asset and he's not so yeah the guys that climb up are ones that you already have seen their production in exactly. the past and you're just like oh i'm gonna pencil them in and you know they'll be back in that spot and he just do he does not run the ball so it, i mean you're talking about uh, his no, uh, he throws it yeah <laughs> he's a thrower his uh <laughs> career high in rushing yardage in a game was seven yards Ooh. so he Goals. is he is hey, back behind the line that's almost a full point jay philip rivers is like yeah he's, he's like, like what how'd you do that yeah uh, Christian McCaffrey, uh, do you guys like him? Yep. <laughs> Overall, uh, RB1. Uh, uh, I mean, I I don't mind if people want the wide receivers over him, but if I'm taking a running back there, it for me, it, it's locked in. It's Christian McCaffrey. He'll be a centerpiece of the offense won, every week. Once he was in San Francisco, he was averaging 21 opportunities a game. Now that did, it fluctuated a little bit with um the with Elijah Mitchell reappearing and then disappearing but there's also you could question that of like McCaffrey missed you know week nine here um or what was, was that the bye week was am I looking at that wrong I don't know but it would like her, his snap percentages went kind of down um with Eliza Mitchell and then they skyrocketed when Mitchell wasn't there but I don't look at that as in as any sort of hindrance of why I would take McCaffrey at number one what's crazy is he scored a lot more when Elijah Mitchell was not on the field than he did when Elijah Mitchell was healthy but what he scored the the lower number of what he was scoring with Elijah Mitchell still good enough to be the running back number one overall uh he you know he's just too involved in the passing game and if you look at Brock Purdy when everybody was healthy Christian McCaffrey was targeted over and over and over in the pass game. I mean, they, they utilize his receiving skill the way that fantasy managers dream of. Yes, just keep throwing him the ball. Think about how highly Alvin Kamara was drafted year after year after year with a very competent Mark Ingram that was sharing the occasional touch on the field. Like, I don't think we – like, Elijah Mitchell, that's the worst that could happen when he would be the right. Ingram to the Kamara. Um, let's get into the wide receivers because I am extremely bullish on – both of them. Um, Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, I have back to back in my rankings. I think they're okay. both they're both as wide receiver twos right now with extreme upside. Um, I'm the highest on both of them in our group. And Debo's the one I we haven't talked a lot about. I've talked about Brandon Ayuk and, and his emergence last season. If you go and you listen to Debo Samuel talk about last year, 
He was distracted by the contract coming into the season. Said he was out, not in the shape he should have been in once to flush that season down the toilet. The season prior, he was number two overall at the position. What I brought up, Mike, when you when you asked me why am I not maybe more on the Debo side now than the Brandon Ayuk side, part of that came from this insight, and I'll, I'll shout out to John Daigle, talking about target shares in the six games that McCaffrey, Debo, Kittle, Ayuk were on the field together with Brock Purdy, who's their presumptive quarterback. Debo had 25.5% target share in those games. CMC was at 21.6%, Ayuk at 16%, and Kittle at 11%. And that's the number I brought up to you on that other show when we were talking about it. Um, part of that is a trust that a healthy Debo Samuel is better than almost every football player in the game. And so I do believe that if he's out there and he's healthy, and I'm going to presume that health going into the season, um, he has put a lot of effort into this offseason. He's a player I'm willing to go out on a ledge. Would you, would you say that he's like been trying to show off his effort, Andy? Why don't you read the quote that we may have, <laughs> oh, we may have come right. upon? You, you want me to go for it? Or? Yeah, I mean, you're, the, you're the Debo guy over here, so why don't you share this? Kyle Shanahan said this on Debo's current fitness. <clears throat> this is kind of stuff that we share here. And I quote, <laughs> Never had a grown man send me so many pictures with his shirt off, but it looks good. <laughs> So I don't think you see a number two overall season where his efficiency, he scored a touchdown every nine touches, but you also don't see last year where he scored every 19 touches. You find something in the middle, I think that's going to put him 10 to 12. And I know that's the bull case for Debo. The bear case is hurt again, a lot of target distribution everywhere else, but I really think he's one of the best players in football. Um, I mean, you've got a talented player who's done it before on the field with a great offense and a great offense of mine and Kyle Shanahan. I don't blame anyone for taking the shot. I have a very, very difficult time investing in any San Francisco 49ers option because if they are all healthy, then outside of Christian McCaffrey, they're all going to suck. Now the reality, you know, when I, when I stat, when I stat this out for, for the UDK, I'm, I'm, you know, presuming the health of this team. In reality, That's there will strong, be injuries. That's a really yeah. strong phrase, though, to say all going to suck. Yeah, I think that, well, that, you probably want to reword that. I don't want to reword it. Reword <laughs> it, or maybe not. I will not be retract because <laughs> I think the way in which it comes will not be good for your fantasy team. That doesn't mean Debo Samuel finishes as the wide receiver forty. He could finish as the wide receiver fifteen, where you've got him ranked, and you might have a very bad experience along the way. Because sometimes it's a Kittle game, sometimes it's an Ayuk game, sometimes it's a, a a Debo game, and and I just don't like the inconsistency of not knowing who it's going to be. And and if there is one player who would be consistent throughout, it would be Debo. Debo has far more manufactured touches. Man, than you fact. Man, <laughs> yeah. what? what? Well What's done. crazy is, and to that point, Jason, when you look at consistency, and I think one one thing that fa uh, you know fantasy players could hold on to, the way that they would in Cincinnati, is that they score a ton of points. They're going to be in the top five, six in points per game. Debo, I looked this up the other day because I was breaking this down. Games played in his career, okay, when he has not been injured or left, right, or games played when he's not left injured. His averages historically. For his entire career, 6.7 catches, 89 yards, 0.6 touchdowns, three rushing attempts for 33 yards, and 0.8 rushing touchdowns. Yes, he's, he's so been crazy efficient. So when he's played efficient. in any game ever, that's his whole career, mm -hmm. even from day one, when he's not injured or leaves injured, he's been kind of insane. And so, it, you know, it's going to be – and Brandon Ayuk should not be buried in all of that. Like, he was a very, very good player last year. And he's going to have his games. Like Jason said, there's going to be, I think I lean on the side, there's going to be the Kittle and Ayuk game. And then there'll be the Debo and CMC game. And then there'll be the Kittle and Debo game. I think it'll be a couple of really good options each week. I think it'll be a couple really good options each week, but I see CMC as one of those good options every week. I sure. think it's going to be CMC and Debo. And then CMC and Kittle or CMC and, and the and music Ayuk. factory. CMC and the music factory. So, Mike, where does that leave George? <laughs> I'm on fire over there. Yeah. <laughs> He doesn't jump I, in for five I minutes. I apologize. For, for nothing. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Where does that leave Kittle? 
This <sighs> Kittle has this Man. like malaise in drafts right now that I don't know if it feels the same as Hawkinson for some reason where um, the, you know, we haven't been super excited about Hawkinson, but I've heard nobody say go after Kittle. I know where Jason stands. Mike, are you willing to take Kittle in the middle of the fifth? Ooh, I don't. Th I don't think so. Uh, I think I'd be I'd be willing to take Kittle if he dropped maybe a round. Uh, if but he it, dropped like a it, a biddle. <laughs> Yes, thank you. We're rare form today, fellas. Football is on the way, and we are ready. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if, the fifth round I think is just a little too rich for me because it it will be inconsistent. The a nice thing that you can look at is George Kittle was just on an absolute touchdown tear over the final four weeks, which were Brock Purdy weeks. Um, so you we do at least have that, and George George Kittle is incredible at football. He just is. It's unfortunate that a lot of the time he's not asked to go out there and and catch passes. They will start the season on the road against Pittsburgh, on the road against the Rams, and then the Giants in Arizona at home. So that's how they'll begin the year. Okay. Uh, slight favorites on the road in Week One right now against Pittsburgh. Let's take a quick break and come back with Geno Smith. All right, we're back. We're talking about the Seahawks. And no, I didn't mean like Geno was going to be on the show. That's what it sounds no. like. But we're going to come back and talk about Geno Smith and the 9-8 and eight Seahawks who, you know, were one of the biggest surprises last year. Six win total. That's what they went into the season with. With This year, it's at 9.5. So when you look at that compared to uh, what's San Francisco, at 10.5? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's tight. And they were only 4-6 and six in one-score games. They could have, you know – Closed a few games better than they did last year, and this would have been a, a, a better football team. Finished the year three and six. Uh, Geno Smith burst onto the scene as a competent quarterback. As a good quarterback. As a, he, he was good yeah, last year. As a year. good quarterback. Yes. Yeah, and the, and the team should be far better than it was last year, in part to all the assets they are still receiving from getting rid of Russell Wilson. They added Charbonnet. They added JSN. Uh, they've added some pieces to their defense. I mean, they the, they opened to eight and a half wins, and now they've been bet up to nine and a half wins. This should be a really solid team. The big question that you have to ask and answer to know whether that's true is just is Geno Smith for real? Is right. is he? You know, was that a a one year wonder, just a career year where everything landed well when no one had expectations on him and you know, and he just outperformed or, or, you know, or is he really good? One of the ways to uh, tip the scales towards actually good would be to spend your first round draft pick on the number one rated wide receiver. Yep. Jackson Smith and Jigba join the squad. Then spend your second round pick on a capable, bruising, pass catching uh, compliment to Kenneth Wilson. Uh, Ken Walker. Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker. And they drafted Zach Charbonnet, somebody that we've talked about a lot. So they also gave him money. Like mm -hmm. that, that should not be lost. That it, Geno Smith, you can't give. Of course, the the contract wasn't like what Herbert is. You know, Lamar, what these guys have gotten. But, 40, 40 million guaranteed. Yeah, a three year, seventy five million dollar extension with forty guaranteed. Like that's that's not nothing. That's that's Geno Smith. Is are we on the are we on the Ryan Tannehill path? Is that, what Gino? Gino, is that what Gino's doing? It, hey, look, it, like Tannehill was a full flame out in Miami. Right. And then new team, new opportunity. and Yeah, actually is surrounded by a good organization with, with a good coaching staff, and then good things happen for Ryan Tannehill. It really feels like it. It, it feels like it for me, for Geno Smith, who he's the quarterback 16 currently in ADP. We have him as our consensus QB 11. I don't think that like um, my my admiration and my excitement for Geno Smith is not saying Geno Smith is going to finish as a top six, a top eight quarterback, but it's you can get him at the end of drafts and he can be a top 12 quarterback and he can help carry you through some times. You know, his first four matchups, Rams, Detroit, uh, and the Carolina. Carolina. I mean, like these are, these are 
juicy matchups to start with for uh, for Geno Smith to try and get this the the Seahawks rolling. Heavy so, home favorites that first week. I think that he I think he's a great target in in drafts because he's just the. We aren't overpaying for Geno. What he did last year. Where did he finish? Did he? Did he yeah, finish no, like the five or something? He was the quarterback yeah. five and six six points. I don't uh, think that's going to happen again. But top twelve is is in the range of outcomes. He's being drafted at sixteen. We have him at eleven yes. in, by consensus. And so, you know, you can get him where you can stream him. You don't have to be committed to a season of Geno Smith if things go the wrong way. No, and and. When you are grabbing a quarterback to stream or that you believe that's the, the possibility, you look at what we just looked at. What's the opening schedule? It's, it's awesome. And I know we've brought this up earlier in the offseason, but I have actually started to implement it in my personal strategies and drafts where, you know, I, I do want one of the great quarterbacks and I, I want them to slip to me at a good value, Lamar Jackson. Herbert, those are the guys that I think are, uh, you know, the better values right now. But if if it gets to a point where okay, now Trevor Lawrence and Fields is gone, I'm I'm like punting the position, and what I have found myself doing is drafting Anthony Richardson first, who is going to start the season as my backup, and grabbing Geno Smith with the last pick in the draft, start the season there, I dig it. and you've got competence, you've got uh, you know, a quality quarterback in Geno. And then you've still got the huge upside hope in a mobile Konami code uh, quarterback. And this was a big play team. They had 30 touchdowns of 10 plus yards. That was the most in the NFL. And that's probably only going to improve with the explosive players they've added. I mean, Metcalf, uh, I have him ranked the highest right now, but he's going to be a red zone threat throughout the entire year. Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Um, you know, Tyler Lockett, it's uh, – Yes, please. it's illegal for him to be drafted <laughs> in the top 30 or something. I, you know, you always have a different reason not to take him presented by the fantasy community every year. This year, Jackson Smith and Jigba is the reason. Um, and then all future years will be age. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he, you know, he might not be, you know, the best player on your team, but he's going to be better than where you draft him. And he's been Absolutely. top fifteen for five years. So do I? Do I think he's going to be better this year than last year? I do not. But I think he'll be significantly better than his ADP. And that's you know, all that matters. Wide receiver, seventeen to twenty, maybe. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. And he he's in a role on the outside that is not threatened by Jackson Smith and Jigba. He he's he's just the burner on the outside that's going to catch deep touchdowns and. Uh, keep doing what he's what he's done. I, Nobody looks better when a play breaks down. Tyler Lockett just finds a way to help the quarterback. Yeah, yep. and, you, and you don't really worry about injury with Tyler Lockett. <laughs> I was say it. He, you know, he. Uh, uh, I think well, he missed one do. game this last year. No. I know. I shouldn't say well. it out loud. But sixteen games, sixteen games, sixteen games, sixteen games. Because when he touches the ball, he just goes down. Yeah, he's a smart man. He, this isn't the old school, like, you could have had an extra yard if you just tried to c concuss yourself. Well, he actually did miss a game yeah, last he year. he did. Because yeah. you said 16. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It, one game in the last, what is that, five? He had a boo-boo on his years. hand or something. It's it's still a, a great resume for Tyler Lockett. And he, does, he protects himself. He's a smart player. He's still incredibly fast, has great hands. And Geno Smith was uh, an excellent player. Uh, deep ball passer last week or last year, and I I think that would continue. Yeah, Kyle reminds us that's the Marvin Harrison method of uh, catching the ball and going down. It's funny to think that that's also the Peyton Manning method of <laughs> taking a sack. Uh -huh. So they were together, yeah. just yeah. not getting hurt together. Yeah, protect yourself. I wonder if they had a meeting about that. Just like whatever we do, this team's screwed if we're if either one of us is hurt. So just go down. All right, Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet. The last conversation we need to have in Seattle. Um. Kenneth Walker was the RB5 from weeks 5 through 12. All you had to do was use your eyeballs when you watched him to see how electric, dynamic he is. But he did struggle at times uh, if he didn't have the big play. Yeah. Maybe he was being stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. And Zach Charbonnet, you know, this team has dealt with injuries at running back for years and years and years. So they go out and they invest again. We we saw this before. It was – uh. Who did they, they drafted Penny when they had um, Chris, Chris, Carson. Chris Carson, and now they draft, draft Charbonnet when they had Kenneth Walker. 
and Kenneth Walker gets punted down dynasty draft boards because of this addition. Yeah, Kenneth Walker, we know he's good. He, he proved it last year. He's young. He's a stud running back. If you want to take a shot on him with the loyalty that Pete Carroll usually shows his existing players, I don't hate that. Uh, I have him ranked behind his ADP. I have worries because I, I am a big believer in Charbonnet, and more specifically for fantasy, he's, I believe, going to be the more commonly used guy inside the five-yard line, the goal line Charbonnet. bruiser Charbonnet will be, and he is the clear uh, better pass catcher. I, I, I think that um, Kenneth Walker can catch passes, but that's never been his wheelhouse, whereas Charbonnet is just such an excellent confident capable pass catcher out of the backfield that you lose two of the most important things for fantasy football at the running back position here so um I, I'm fine drafting both players and just believing in the offense of the team and the running game if I had to pick one though I would take the ninth round Charbonnet hope that he outproduces the running back 34 where he's being drafted yeah I was going to point out the for Ken Walker here he had 10 carries inside the five and that turned into two touchdowns. So that can jump around from year to year, but that's that that's not a great inefficiency that you want to see when the team has just spent a second round pick on a guy who's bigger than you and can also catch passes. I don't yeah, and, and for me this backfield is not one that I want to like, you know, go and and, and lock it down. Get both. In you mean? Well, no, I just mean like I don't want to make conclusive decisions on July twenty seventh about my thoughts sure. on these guys because I have what I think might happen, but I want to pay attention to what headlines Charbonnet is making throughout training camp. What's the utilization in preseason? And will we get, you know, is this going to be a midseason uh, sharing of the load? Is Walker going to be one of those players that we look back and we say, wow, they played, you know, the Rams in Detroit and Carolina to start the year. And Walker's the, R, you know, he's the RB1 through the first three weeks. That's a real possibility with the, desire that they have to run the football and his ability to break off a big play. Um, so it'll be something we, we need to pay attention to in camp. What kind of reps these guys are getting. Let's talk about the Rams five and 12 last year it fell apart. They had a win total of 10 and a half and uh, they were coming off the Super Bowl victory this year. It's at six and a half. They partied a little too hard. Yeah. And they had the second most games lost due to injury. So Stafford, Cup, oh, Allen Robinson. <laughs> Addition by subtraction there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, 30th in pace of play, 27th in points per game, 32nd in total yards. Mm. McVay was 32nd in total yards. It was a brutal, brutal season. For I mean, the, Shanahan loses his quarterback all the time, and they, they're no 32nd in total yards. I mean, the, there have been some bad years for uh, – for the 49ers uh, under under Shanahan. Um, and, you know, you have one here with the Rams having a bad season. But Shanahan is great, and he figures it out. And Sean McVay is great, and I believe he's going to figure it out. They, they brought the people back, the most important pieces to this team. And I'm, you know, I, I'm refusing to just believe that they're a trash panda. I, I think they're, I think they're going to be good. Um, I don't know if I stand on an island there, but when you've got a healthy Stafford and Cooper Cup and um Cameron there in the backfield, mm, yes, yeah, full, uh, uh, nickname, oh, nickname. Gosh, Cameron. I didn't know who you were talking about. <laughs> I had no idea. Cameron like Akers. James Cameron or what is what? this a Titanic joke? No, um, look, it's I, not a joke. We're, it's very serious. This team is not going to be a great defense. There is that. This team is going to be more in in the archetype i think of w what detroit did last year but is that and that could be very good for stafford and cup and jefferson and, waiting to and cam Akers. yes i i agree with that cam, I, cam Akers, uh, cameron thank you oh yeah i got, I, you. I got See, you. now i was lost yeah. i think you can be both i think you can be a bad team cam and cameron no that's, that's, <laughs> what, uh, that's all i thought that's all i thought he was saying i thought he was just saying you could you could be why both do I, why do i do this job <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you were there because yeah. it was so obvious to me. <laughs> James Cameron Akers. <laughs> yes. Running uh, back. Oh, man. Yada, yada. <laughs> Bad defense. Yeah. Possibly an offense that has to keep up. 
that can mean bad things too. Matthew Stafford has had problems with turning the football over. So we'll see. Um, it could be the beginning of the end as well for this, for this head coach Stafford, you know, Aaron Donald and company, uh, no more Jalen Ramsey. It wasn't good last year. Daryl nope. Henderson, Allen Robinson are gone. No big additions on offense to speak of other than the return of Cooper cup, the return of Van Jefferson. And then you'll have a mix of Ben Skoranek, Puka Nacau, Tutu Atwell. Very impressive kind of group of names. Yeah. Law firm back behind Cup and Jefferson. Very good names. And then Tyler Higby, who just kind of ho-hum, I'm hanging out yeah. and just, I'm there if you need me. I'm Mr. Necessary. But I also will disappoint you if you were to depend on me. I think the, the Rams... It it feels like their entire it, much like the uh, the Green Bay Packers because there's so much unknown of Jordan Love, but the unknown of the Rams has created a real value opportunity here because Stafford as the quarterback 23, it was just a, essentially two years ago now, but you know over 40 passing touchdowns that year. Like Stafford, if Stafford's healthy, he's not the quarterback 23. Cameron Akers is an incredibly interesting running back taking in, in the fifth round. It is that dead zone running back area, but he, he just he really seemed to have a resurgence to put the team on his back uh, at the end of last season. So I, I, I'm perfectly fine with his ADP. Cooper Cup can be the number one guy. And Van Jefferson is being priced in average draft position of like he like he's just is not even going to being on a football field it's ridiculous wide receiver 70 and he was just off of a really big season before he got hurt uh multiple times kind of missing training camp and then missing the beginning of the season i just there's a lot of a lot of guys here that i like it's kind of, it's going to be kind of gross but i i think that there's fantasy value here in almost every ram i i just think that this will be you know what the you know what the basement could be if it doesn't go right sure and the basement is to produce the least amount of offense possible. So if Stafford behind one of the worst offensive lines in football with like, he has a history of kind of chronic injury neck and back. If he goes out, yeah, your investments will be, yes. and there is a decent odds of that happening. So that would be the one thing to keep in the back of your mind in terms of diversification, maybe not loading up, but, I mean, but the, shoot your shot with some of these undervalues because that's why they're undervalued. It's only Cooper Cup that you have to draft highly, and correct. I don't think that. Although uh, Cam, uh, Cam Akers is not, it's back of the fifth round. Uh, yeah, I mean, but he's in the top twenty-four. He start. He's higher than I thought he would be at this sure. point. Let's put it that way. The, but even you're just kind of making the case here for if things go wrong, that's not stopping you from drafting Cooper Cup at the top, right, Andy? Uh, no, or, no, it's not stopping me from, from that, but I, it, it's going to be a downgrade for Cooper cup. If he loses oh, yes. Matthew of, Stafford, of course. obviously. Yeah. Stafford's health is the biggest fear of this office. Cause if Stafford's out there, then every, every single one of these pieces is undervalued right now, including Cooper cup, uh, who's a first round pick. If Stafford is healthy all season, Cooper cup is being under drafted <laughs> yeah. in the first round, just to remind you how dominant he was. The year before last, he was the wide receiver one. He was the highest scoring player in all of fantasy at every position. He had 367 fantasy points. The second place wide receiver did not have 300 fantasy points in half PPR. And then last year, he was the num he was just doing the same exact thing. He was unstoppable. Was never didn't have a single week where he wasn't a top 20 wide receiver. He was the number one wide receiver on a points per game basis. Uh, by a pretty wide margin. Uh, you know, you you look at him versus Justin Jefferson at that point, 18 versus 20.3 fantasy points. Cooper Cup's just been uh, uh, just a dominator. So if Stafford's healthy, he's worth the risk to me. I do want to bring up, they could start pretty bad. I mean, they face Seattle on the road, very tough place to play. Then they get to play San Francisco. Then they go to Cincinnati. So the first three weeks yeah, of the season rough. are rough for the Rams. What we got here, guys? The end of the show. No, the Cardinals at four and thirteen. Last year they opened with a nine and a half win total. Back mm. when Kyler Murray still had an intact ACL. Cliff Kingsbury was still the coach. 
This year, the win total is at four and a half. They're currently favored in zero games for the entire season. Um, you know, they were two and six in one store, one score games. They had the fourth most games lost due to injury. DeAndre Hopkins is gone, as is A.J. Green and Rob, Robbie, Robert, Chosen, Anderson. But don't worry, guys. David Blau and Zach Pascal and oh. Jeff Driscoll have arrived. Leave it blow. Yeah, and you can even make jokes with Driscoll. Oh, I mean, what we a got them all. Here, here's what I will say. And right now we found out Kyler Murray, Zachary is starting on the pup. Mm -hmm. This team does not have a lot of talent, um, especially on the defensive side of the football. On the offensive side, um, I think that there is, you know, we, we've had some bad Cardinal teams. If you go back to 2018, that Arizona Cardinals team, was an absolute train wreck. That would be the Steve Wilkes season, mm. where I believe they were what one in fifty or two in. Well, they were they were four. one. They were the first overall pick. Yeah. So I do want to point out this team probably won't do what that team did, under the simple reason that if Kyler Murray's playing quarterback, it gives them an opportunity on offense every week. And you know, in this league, if you have a quarterback, you can have. Two turnovers by the opposing quarterback and Kyler's competent, and you might win a couple ball games. That 2018 team had no quarterbacks. Josh Rosen, as I said. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not projecting victories for this team. A lot of them, but I will say I think, you know, they're going to have all of their ADPs driven down due to the fact that they're kind of known as being the worst team in football. Um, that's the way Vegas has it projected. But Kyler Murray has always produced as a quarterback in fantasy. James Conner, since he's come to Arizona, has always produced. Hollywood Brown, when he's been healthy, has always produced. And, um, you know, I know Zach Ertz is coming off the ACL, but someone in the tight end position will have opportunities here too. So where are the diamonds in this dirty, dirty sewer <laughs> Of the Arizona I actually, Cardinals, I you know I I know uh, we are hometown fans and sometimes we get called homers, but I think there's actually quite a bit of value to be had for fantasy from the Arizona Cardinals because it appears so putrid that people want to be hands off. the The truth here is that their defense it it has like one good player. Buddha, yeah, Bu who's hopefully gonna uh, yeah, yeah play for yeah, us. He's he's gonna play. It's just poor guy. It's just one of those things where Kyler is not missing the season. I you know you you watch videos of him right now um, on the Cardinals flight plan. He is on his way to playing football. He wants to be there week one. Which is still a, it's still a possibility. It is absolutely a yeah. possibility. He's running right now. Uh, obviously not cutting and doing all of those things, but he's clocking on gps like great miles per hour on his runs he, i run great miles per hour he could be uh he could certainly be there week one but it's a guarantee unless uh, some new injury happens that he's playing for at least half the season or or if not you know the majority of the season he's not missing the whole season so if you've got kyler with a terrible defense there will be fantasy points to be scored here uh one from kyler Two from James Conner because he is the uh, the only running back in town and he catches passes and he's great around the goal line. So James Conner, I think, is a great value. And Hollywood, with the departure of Hopkins, he becomes the one again. If Kyler plays week one, Hollywood Brown is the singular best steal at wide receiver in the draft right now. Yeah, in my opinion, it, you saw because, it last year. Yeah, last I mean, year when when Hopkins was suspended for those first few games, it, he had three top ten wide receiver performances last year in is, that stretch. Is he uh, in that category, Jason? Where, like you said, an injury or a, a situation, eventually the ADP gets driven up, but it doesn't get driven up enough. Hollywood's at wide receiver thirty right now. That is not in his range of outcomes with a healthy Kyler Murray at all. The targets will be too uh, – there'll just be too many targets uh, with too bad of a defense. Hollywood Brown will be a top 15 receiver, I think, yeah. if Kyler was healthy. And the best part is is that even if Kyler is not healthy, he's still the wide receiver one for, for the NFL team that will be throwing the ball. Like He's going to catch eight passes a game. 
So I, from, I think from Clayton Toon, sure, from whoever Colt McCoy, Clayton Toon, it, he will catch passes. They won't be as valuable. He won't be a superstar, but he won't be a wasted pick when you're drafting him as the wide receiver thirty. Yeah, I agree, Mike. Is there other are there other opportunities? Trey McBride, Rondale Moore, Michael Wilson, the rookie, Greg Dortch, the PPR machine. Yeah, I I think it will be interesting. Rondale Moore is is still interesting to me. I have him ranked above his his current ADP. Uh it just if if it works out that you have Hollywood and then uh Michael Wilson on the outside so that Rondale can go play in the slot where he needs to be, where he has when he's thrived, that's where it has happened. So I I think that he's interesting as a, as a really late pick, and it's it's hard to know what to make of of Trey McBride. He was a second round pick. I mean that that's really high draft capital for for a tight end. Zach Ertz is on the pup right now. I mean he really hurt his knee this past season. He looks so happy in the team <laughs> pictures though, man. Uh, he seems, he looked like a guy with just he seems like a, a rejuvenated jovial, a jovial fella, but. <laughs> It's going to be some time before Zacherts is ready to play football, and he's also older and not the player that he used to be. And Trey McBride is the future of this team. And you know, just for a particularly hot stat, he is Trey McBride is one of six rookie tight ends over the last decade to have a game of at least seven for seventy-five and a score. That's a that's a big boy fantasy game at the tight end position. And that those guys were Jordan Reed, Pitts, Evan Ingram, George Kittle, Trey McBride, and Tim Wright. Is that with Colt? Uh, I don't I, – I think so. Or, I don't think it was with Kyler. I, yeah, it was at, it was at the Colt end. Colt got hurt too. It was towards the, yeah. the, the, the end of the year. So I think that Trey McBride is not something – it's not somebody I'm really targeting in my drafts, but he's someone that if – if he pops week one, mm -hmm. I, I'll go. I, I'll like I'll push some some fab in on on McBride. And if you're in, if if you're in a deeper league, then and you want to stash him at the end of the bench, I think that's a, I think it's a, a worthy bet to take. All right, we're not going to talk about the Cardinals anymore. Time to move on. Best ball breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. Yeah, it was David it was, Blau. It was David Blau. Yes. No, blau, blau, oh. blau. This show is a special one. All right, best ball breakdown. Talking best ball and underdog fantasy. Today we're looking at ADP risers, and we tracked underdog ADP in early May. We compared it to this past week and just wanted to share what we discovered. Some of these players, very appropriate moves in average draft position. Some of them may be too reactionary. You guys can tell me what you think. But at the wide receiver position, here are the wideouts that moved more than 25 spots in average draft position. Van Jefferson moved the most, 53 spots. Rondale Moore moved 44 spots after the DeAndre Hopkins departure, I'm sure. Tim Patrick with the good news on his health, 35 spots. Nico Collins, 35 spots. Uh, I did bring him up a couple weeks ago, maybe in that um, brief Houston part of the show, but I do think he has opportunities there without Brandon Cooks. Paris Campbell, 30 spots. Sky Moore, 27 spots. And Devontae Parker, 27 spots. So the guys here that I really like, we've we've talked about Van Jefferson for a little mm -hmm. while, Mike. The, uh, maybe you're the reason he moved up. Probably. 53. Probably. Uh, Cer almost certainly. Uh, spots. But um, – he, he's he's a great option, and Tim Patrick to me is someone that I think you know he got a lot of money. He produced very well. You still in at at ADP one sixty seven? Yeah, I am. I'm still in it. I mean, that's that's still very very late. Um, you know, I, I the, some of these players I'm not in on. I know a lot of people love Nico Collins, and they see the opportunity to have an upgraded quarterback, and he showed flashes last year. I just don't want the rookie quarterback situation. No, you here. want Russ. Uh, yeah, I would. I would prefer <laughs> Russ. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. and you know, I'm not uh not a Russ apologist by any means. I don't think he's very good, but rookie quarterback supporting wide receiver ones is just so rare. The crazy thing about Tim Patrick is, I know we all like him, but his career high is 53 receptions, and he's going to be 30 this year. Yeah, which is just a weird. It's a weird place to be. Like I know, I I don't know if we love him as much as we don't like 
anything we saw last year from Denver. Yeah, it's, just con- it's a little concerning because like Corlin Sutton doesn't disappear, right? Jerry Judy's pretty good. And Mims, they Greg added Dulcich, Mims. Uh, yeah, Mims is dealing with small, uh, small some injury. injury or something. Yeah, he's our, but yeah, right. um, Mike, do you have anything to add on the wideouts there? No, I, well, I guess I'll add that that Devontae Parker here, even bumping up to 188, still feels like a automatic. So if you need Take a wide, him everywhere. if you need yeah. a wide receiver at the end of the draft, why not Devontae Parker, who could be. Or, I mean, he really should be the number one wide receiver for the Patriots. They gave him uh, an, another year. Like they've already rewarded him with more money. And let's see. It, and it's it is the Patriots moving. Man, the stink of last year for the Patriots is just it is a heavy, heavy fog that Matt Patricia and company created over there. And that's not what it is. We got. I, I got to remind myself that's not what it, we they will be putting on the field. It will be someone who actually understands. An NFL offense, and ho- hopefully we get some output here from Parker. Devontae Parker's career is ridiculous. 71st, 49th, 54th, 107th, then 7th overall, <laughs> yeah. then 42nd, 69th, and 65th. This is somehow his ninth season. All right, running backs who rose more than 25 spots in average draft position. The biggest move, Alexander Madison, of, after of the departure of Dalvin Cook. Jerome Ford, who looks locked into the backup role in Cleveland, if you don't know that name, behind Nick Chubb. They've talked up his pass-catching chops. Mm-hmm. We all hope it's Nick Chubb. We're all really hoping it is, and we might be disappointed. Tank Bigsby, running back for Jacksonville, yeah, 37 spots, uh, a rookie, and then Antonio Gibson and Jalen Warren. A couple more um, eh, backups, I guess you would call them. I mean, really – Ford, Bigsby, Gibson, and Warren are all not going to be the highest percentage of work in those backfields, all of them moving up quite a bit. People taking shots on, you know, injuries to the starters or emerging talents behind them. Yeah, I I think when it comes to Jerome Ford, Tank Bigsby, and Jalen Warren, you've got drafters on underdog being wise and trying to find guys that have a little bit more than just the insurance option while still having a huge insurance payout should the de facto running back one go down Jerome Ford is you know we we don't know if Chubb's gonna get everything but Kareem Hunt had an important role and he's gone so he could actually end up scoring even if Chubb is healthy Dearness Johnson had games here and there yeah and and so that's the same situation with Tank Bigsby and Jalen Warren where you're starting to realize these guys are going to be involved they're going to catch some passes uh, you know, they, they they could have some standalone value, but then they skyrocket should the, you know, the incumbent running back one go down. All right, that was Best Ball Breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. You can get your first deposit matched up to $100 using the code BALLERS. BALLERS. Couple reminders here at the end of the show. We reminders. have our final Saturday episode on Saturday. What? Yeah. And yep. then next week we're into five shows a week starting Tuesday, Tuesday starting on Tuesday first day of August and then we're here hold on to your butts I feel like I really want to do like our final Saturday show on a Friday just to be different yeah just to be like this is a set that makes no sense it, that will just fit with all the weird stuff that happened on today's show anyways <laughs> any parting words for James Cameron Acres? Uh just call him Cameron oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, by his birth Sorry. name thank you very much see everybody later Goodbye. Whatever. (laughs) Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.